Now, coming back to frame, does, uh, this is a question he asks uh, when he wants to give Van Til's answer, does God's plan include evil? And frame answers for Van Til, does God's plan include evil? Yes and no. But he doesn't explain why he says no. The, a, the yes is correct, of course. God's plan includes everything. And uh, you will see in Isaiah, the 45th chapter in the 7th verse, that God creates evil. And why anybody should say no can only be explained on the basis that he pays no attention to the scriptures. Yeah, <clears throat> the original edition of uh, the Schofield Bible uh, had a note on Isaiah 45.7 and the note said this the Hebrew word Ra which is the word in the the, the note is this the, the Hebrew word Ra is never translated sin he was referring of course to the King James Version the Hebrew word ra is never translated sin. Now the remarkable point about that note is that it's absolutely true. Now how would a person know that the Hebrew word ra is never translated sin in the Old Testament since that's the Hebrew? How would you get to know that? Huh? How much of the Hebrew text? And, of course, all the text of the King James Version, too. Yeah. So you couldn't make that statement unless you had examined every case, wouldn't you? <coughs> well, in any case, however you do it. Okay. Yeah, of course, a concordance has, has, has done, has done most, most of the work for you. Now then, if, if Schofield examined every case of Ra in the... Old Testament, he must have known that Ra means murder, adultery, theft, lying, and uh, all sorts of sins. And yet he said it's never translated sin. That's right, it isn't. But it refers to murder, adultery, theft, false witness, covetousness, all sins. I am, I am making the linguistic assertion that the word Ra refers to all sorts of sins. And uh, as for some suggestion that you make, if you will continue with the verses in Isaiah, you will find that uh, <coughs> the following verse refers to peace. And if you look at it in the context, it isn't peace between, say, Israel and Syria or something like that. It's peace with God. And so if evil and peace are contrasted, and if peace means spiritual peace with God, then Ra means sin. But Schofield didn't want to say that. So he said something that was perfectly true, and completely misleading. Another, another example of Van Til's rejection of systematic theology. The image of God in man is both lost and retained. To quote, the image is lost in some sense and also remains in some sense. In incidentally, I'm, this is a verbatim quotation. Uh, this, I'm not making this, I'm not summarizing it all. This is, these are Frame's own words, uh, including the little parenthesis in some sense. The image is lost in some sense and also remains in some sense. Since the precise senses, and this is still Frame's wording, since the precise senses are not specified we are left with a paradoxical formulation. <coughs> uh, 
uh, let me read that over again. The image, that is the image of God. And really you shouldn't talk about the image of God in man. The scripture says man is the image of God. The image of God isn't something that happens to be in man with a lot of other things. Man himself is the image of God. Uh, well, I'll read this. The image is lost in some sense and also remains in some sense. Since the precise senses are not specified, we are left with a paradoxical formulation. End of quote. And furthermore, not only is there no paradox, contrary to what Frame says, but the senses are specified. He says they're not. Well, the, the scriptures specify the senses in which the image, uh, well, I wouldn't say the image is lost. Uh, and most of the Reformed theologians do not say the image is lost. They say it's deformed and point out very clearly that it's not lost. So, uh, a person who says they are not specified is a little arrogant, I think, for he implies that if he does not see it in Scripture, no one else can. And uh, some, some very humble people are terribly arrogant. 